Isang magandang araw sa inyong lahat. Sa video ito, tayo ay magsasolve ng isang sample problem patungkol sa isang closed type ideal Brayton refrigeration cycle. Basahin natin ang kabuuan ng word problem na ito. A refrigerator working on an ideal Brayton refrigeration cycle operates between the pressure limits of 1.05 bar and 8 bars. Air is drawn from the cold chamber at 10 degrees Celsius, compressed, and then is cooled to 30 degrees Celsius before entering the expansion cylinder. What is the refrigerating capacity if the mass flow rate of air in the system is 1 kg per second? Calculate the COP using the temperatures at each state point. Use gamma is equal to 1.4 and the constant pressure specific heat of air as 1 kJ per kg Kelvin. Tingnan natin ang schematic diagram ng ating Brayton refrigeration cycle. Let's label these state points first. Sabihin natin at the outlet of the low temperature heat exchanger, we have state 1. Samantalang sa outlet naman ng compressor, we have state 2 or 2S. Dahil sabi sa ating problem, this is an ideal Brayton refrigeration cycle. So ang ibig sabihin nito ay yung ating compressor at yung ating turbine ay parehong isentropic. Next, ang outlet ng ating high temperature heat exchanger ay state 3. Samantala ang outlet ng ating turbine ay state 4 or 4S. Let's begin this problem by writing all the given that we know. Una, ang temperature ng air from the cold chamber ay 10 degrees Celsius. So, sabi dito sa ating phrasing, it is compressed afterwards. So, we can say that T1 is basically 10 degrees Celsius. Take note that since the formulas that we are going to use later are in Kelvin, it's good kung ikakonvert na natin ito agad sa Kelvin. So, we just add 273.15. This becomes 283.15 Kelvin. Next, it is cooled to 30 degrees before entering the expansion cylinder. So, malinaw sa ating schematic diagram na ang inlet ng ating expansion cylinder or basically yung turbine ay state 3. So, we can just say that temperature at state 3 is equal to 30 degrees Celsius plus 273.15 para i-convert to sa Kelvin. Tayo ay magkakaroon ng 303.15 Kelvin. We also know that the pressure limit are as follows. So, we have... P low, that is equal to 1.05 bar, and P high equals 8 bars. Also, according to our problem, the mass flow rate of air is equal to 1 kilogram per second. Also, gamma is equal to 1.4. Gamma is the ratio of your constant pressure and constant volume specific heats. And we have CP, the constant pressure specific heat of air, is 1 kJ per kilogram Kelvin. Ngayon, isulat natin ang iba't ibang formula upang isolve ang ating refrigerating capacity at COP. Alam natin na ang refrigerating capacity ay equal lang sa mass flow rate times the constant pressure specific heat multiplied to the change in temperature in your low temperature heat exchanger. And if we inspect our schematic diagram, it's going to be T1 minus T4. Samantala, ang ating COP ay mananatiling refrigerating capacity divided by the net power. The net power is basically the power consumed by the compressor minus the magnitude of the power extracted from the turbine. Again, ang ating refrigerating capacity ay MCP T1 minus T4. Samantala, ang ating compressor work ay given ng sumusunod na formula. We have M dot times CP multiplied by the temperature change in the compressor. Let's inspect our schematic diagram. We have T2 minus T1. After this, let us just factor this out in the entire expression. Alam natin meron tayong MCP dito sa part na ito. So, let's not just write it here and immediately factor it out of the equation. So, meron tayong delta T ng turbine. So, the temperature change in the turbine is going to be T3 minus T4. And from here, alam natin ang mass flow ng refrigerant sa buong system ay parehas lang dahil sila ay nasa loob lang ng isang loop. Samantalang, ang constant pressure specific heat ay 
magka-cancel din. So, in other words, kaya nating i-express ang ating COP in terms of temperatures. We have T1 minus T4 divided by T2 minus T1 minus T3 minus T4. So far, ang alam nating temperatures ang ay yung temperature kay state 1 at state 3. So we can just check them here para alam natin kung alin yung mga kailangan nating isolve. Evidently, we need to solve for T4 and T2. Kapag meron tayong isentropic compression or expansion, alam natin na ito ay governed lang ng sumusunod na equation. We have T high, which is basically the higher temperature between the two temperatures that we have, divided by T low. And this is going to be equal to the pressure ratio, meaning you have P high divided by P low raised to gamma minus 1 divided by gamma. So let us apply this formula later. Sunod, i-drawing natin ang TS diagram ng ating Rayton refrigeration cycle. Let's label the two pressure levels over here. The upper level, which is this one, is equal to 8 bar as we defined a while ago. Samantalang itong lower pressure level naman ay 1.05 bar. Sabihin natin si state 1 ay nandito. Alam natin ang process 1, 2 ay isang isentropic compression process. So we just go vertically upward until the next pressure level. So we have something that looks like this. So this is going to be our state 2 or 2S. Remember that they are coinciding dahil ito ay isang ideal process. Sunod ang process 2 to 3 naman ay isang isobaric heat rejection process. So it will trace the isobaric line, which are the dotted lines that you can see on your screen. And let's say ang state 3 ay somewhere here. So this process over here is process 2 to 3. Next, we have process 3 to 4, which is basically an isentropic expansion process. So from the higher pressure level, tayo ay pupunta pa baba. We have from this pressure level all the way down to the lower pressure level. Panghuli, meron tayong process 4-1 na isang isobaric heat absorption process. So let us just trace the isobaric lines in our TS diagram. Now, let us proceed to the main agenda which is basically solving for the different states. So isulat lang natin lahat ng ating alam upang ma-fully define ang bawat isang state point. Sinabi sa ating problem na ang temperature at state 1 ay 10 degrees Celsius which we have already converted a while ago so we have 283.15 Kelvin. Samantala, ang pressure at state 1 naman ay equal sa 1.05 bar. If you get confused, again just inspect your TS diagram. In this case, we don't need to convert the pressure into kilopascals or any other unit dahil ang mahalaga lang naman dito ay ang ratio ng ating pressures. The important thing is for them to have the same units. Let's now define state 2. Alam natin na ang pressure at state 2 ay equal sa 8.0 bar. Unfortunately, hindi natin alam si temperature at state 2. Dito ngayon papasok yung formula na dinefine natin kanina. Between states 1 and 2, alam natin na ang temperature 2 ay mas mataas kay temperature 1. Also, alam din natin ang pressure at state 2 ay mas mataas at state 1. Kaya naman, let's apply these notations gamit ang formula na dinefine natin kanina. So, meron tayong T2 divided by 283.15 equals 8.0 bar, which is P2, over 1.05 bar. Again, as long as the units of these two pressures are the same, wala tayong magiging problema. Moving forward, we have 1.4 minus 1 all over 1.4. And we can just input this formula in our calculator and use the technique shift solve. In this case, sabihin natin si T2 ay x. And we can just proceed on inputting the other values. Press shift, click solve, and then input a number that is relatively high. Sabihin natin mga nasa 500 Kelvin. Press equals, and then press equals one more time. So we have 505.81 Kelvin. 
Let us define state 3. At base sa ating given, alam natin na si T3 ay equal sa 303.15 Kelvin. Samantala, base sa ating TS diagram, P3 is still equal to 8 bar. So, isulat lang natin ang mga values na ito. We move forward to state 4. And unfortunately, ang alam lang natin sa state 4 ay yung pressure. So, P4 is equal to 1.05 bar. Samantala, ang state 4 ay makukuha natin gamit ang ating isentropic formula. So, again, balikan natin ng ating formula. We have this. So, let us just replace high and low with states 3 and 4 respectively dahil alam natin na si T3 ay mas mataas kesa sa T4. Input natin ang values na alam natin. We have 303.15 Kelvin divided by T4 which is an unknown. And this is going to be equal to 8.0 divided by 1.05 raised to 1.4 minus 1 divided by 1.4. Input this in our calculator. This case, sasabihin natin si x ay si T4. So we have 303.15 divided by x. And let's proceed with entering the other numbers. Press shift, press solve. And then let's input a relatively low number kasi alam natin na yung temperature at state 4 ay mababa. Press enter, or equal rather, and then press equal once more. There we have it. We have temperature 4 that is equal to 169.70 Kelvin. Going back sa mga formula na pinakita natin kanina, let us just input the pertinent values. We have 1 kilogram per second as the mass flow rate. We have 1 kilojoule per kilogram Kelvin as the specific heat capacity multiplied by 283.15 minus 169.70. So, remember this as units of Kelvin. So, magka-cancel sa Kelvin, magka-cancel din sa kilogram, we are going to be left with kilojoules per second, which is basically kilowatts. So, let's input this in our calculator. Finally, we have a refrigerating capacity that is equal to 113.45 kilowatts. Next, isolve natin sa COP. And again, let us just enter the pertinent values of these temperatures. Input these values in our calculator. We have a COP that is equal to 1.27. There we have it. Kung mapapansin ninyo, mas simple ang ating calculations kumpara sa mga standard vapor compression refrigeration cycles dahil tayo ay gumamit ng temperatures sa halip na enthalpies. Again, in some problems, you might be required to use enthalpies instead of temperatures, but in the context of this course, we use temperatures. Salamat sa panonood ng video ito. Sana may natutunan kayo at kung may mga tanong, just comment down below.